All right. Currently Friday, the 7.02 a.m. I got up at, oh, it's actually 6.59, my microwave is wrong. Got up at around 6.30. Um, I have an Uber heading here around 7.10ish. And the style station, my bus is at nine, but with rush hour, I wanted to be safe. Um, uh, it's either I get there within 20 minutes, like normal drive on time, or get there in an hour and a half and be late because of rush hour. But anyway, that's next. So we'll see how it goes. I guess. I'm back in the old dorm. My glasses have not uh, faded back to normal. I was gonna make this a travel log, but I didn't record anything really. So it's Friday, and I have no idea what I'm gonna do for Monday. So I wanted to be productive today, and uh, heading over to the library right out of room, although I probably. Hello everybody, my name is Mark. I'm a computer scientist, like double major, might be major in computer science, minor in psych, graduating in three years anyway, studying at NYU, and today I'm just going to talk about the application process of getting in. Elliot, I'll get to your video soon, TM. I tried recording it twice already, but I haven't liked how it turned out. The sound might be a little weird in here because I'm in one of the study rooms in the library that's meant for one person, so I don't know how the walls are, so I'm speaking a little quietly. Pretty much, I just want to start by saying, don't compare yourself to me. I'm not going to give any numbers of mine away. No, I did not get a 1600 on the SAT. I didn't use it though. No, I did not get a 36 on the ACT. And no, I did not have a 4.0 GPA in high school. If I had, you know, worked for those things, which I believe I could have, and I believe anyone can, I would have missed out on a lot of other opportunities, such as the things I do outside uh, school, pretty much. Um, I'm just going to kind of go over you know, what I had in mind when applying, um, my personal essay that I wrote. I was gonna apply to seven schools, but I applied to four schools early, I got into four schools early, um, and I'm only gonna talk about two of them, NYU and Wisconsin-Madison. I'm just like waiting for someone to walk in any moment and be like, shut up. Anyway, the um, first time I heard about NYU was on a podcast. Uh, someone who does video editing online that I follow and, you know, kind of admire. Um, and I was like, oh, that's, that's like interesting, like they say that, and so, Looked more into it, it's probably three or four years ago. And um, I was like, yeah, you know what? I, I think it'd be cool going here. Now, I'm an introvert, I'm not much of a city person, but I still love the city. Sure, it's loud, but everything's nice and close to each other. Nothing's really specifically campus. Um, but when I first went to college touring, I was with my sister, she was looking for schools. Looking for schools. schools. And I was like, oh. City campus isn't that bad, so that's kind of why I started looking at city campuses. Now, obviously, Madison, Wisconsin is the exact polar opposite, but those are my two choice schools, Madison and uh, NYU. I'm really not sure how to go about this video. I tried to write a few notes of what I wanted to talk about, but I still don't know how to structure this. So the, the first thing I want to talk about, uh, which a lot of people say is the most important part of the uh, application, and I kind of agree, um, do know that I believe the system is kind of like a filtering system, right? So with however many people are applying to schools these days, no admissions office is gonna read every single application. I'd imagine, um, and this is, I guess, backed up by logic, uh, but I can't say I'm certain about this, but you know, I've seen videos and articles about it. Schools will filter by the numbers. So if you have above X on a standardized test or above an X GPA, the your everything about your application goes through. Otherwise, you just, you get marked on the list of, sorry, we can't accept you. And speaking of acceptance, before I go into this essay, don't get upset if you don't get your first choice. My sister, Claudia, you're probably watching this, she didn't get into her first choice, but she's absolutely killing it in school. Uh, and, you know, ROTC, I'm not gonna say anything more about that. I don't wanna give anything away, but uh, she's doing really well. She's on such a good path. And, you know, I spoke about this before, but we don't see what's behind the scenes. I don't see what's behind the scenes, but she's on a really good path either way. And she's really loving what she's doing and she's totally invested. Uh, and I hope to be that committed to, you know, either computer science or psychology or that committed to something by the end of my college career. Anyway, high school archives. Common app personal essay. So you're probably gonna be applying through the Common app. And one big thing was really important for me. I wrote this essay about the subjective self and my ob objective self. 
And while I could go into that heavily, I could go into that a lot, I wrote this and I was happy with, you know, what it talked about, but it wasn't answering a college essay. And my, you know, my dad looked over, he gave me some tips. And so I was trying to make this essay, I was trying to form it into, you know, a college essay, but my guidance counselor said, make it a narrative. And if you take anything away from this video, that's, that's what I tell you. I self-studied for the AP Biology exam and, you know, my dad asked me, why not take AP Biology in school instead of Anatomy Physiology? And my answer was, if a school accepts me because I took one more AP, and that's not the school I want to go to. I don't want to go to a school that, you know, accepts me because I took a fourth or a fifth AP class my senior year. And so, yeah, you know, I give that advice back to you. Don't, you know, maybe they're, you know, Harvard, Columbia, Ivy Leagues, they're probably gonna look for that stuff. And if that's you, send it all the way. So, I made my essay a narrative. As a computer science major, that's what I applied as. I thought it was important to get across the non-computer science me, so I wrote about the time I was in the junior play. Um, I'm going to quickly go through and highlight some important parts because I don't want to take up all your time, you know, reading this essay. No, I'm going to just talk about my application and stuff like that. So, so uh, the Common App will give you a bunch of prompts, uh, and the prompt I chose at the time was discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself and others. So originally, I was trying to give insight into my mental battle between the subjective and the objective. Because I've, I've been really good at storytelling and coming up with that stuff, I decided to tell a story, uh, a narrative, and that's, that's what really got me. So, okay, so ironically enough, <laughs> I just read the rock essay. Um, the prompt is still the same, accomplishment, event, or realization. But um, I'm actually just gonna kind of compare the two. So I talked about, you know, hurdles, um, challenges, failure, you know, external challenges coming at me quickly, passing after what may feel like an attorney. But it was more of an essay into insight about how I see conflict between mind and body. And then all of a sudden it was my high school achievements. And then at the end, I was just like, I still deal with conflict, everyone does. Um, and I keep working towards the unity between mind, body, and spirit. And, you know, it, it sounds good, but it's not. Running through life, we all jump hurdles. Sometimes we make it over, but other times we fall and hit the ground hard. My actual essay, thunder crackles in the background, the lights come up. Nearly 200 people are present to witness what could have been a disaster. I stand up and my legs are feeling more like freshly made jello than they are muscle and bone. When my line was up, I was occupied and wondering why I decided to sign up for this. Thanks to months of hard work and practice, my brain kicked itself into gear and I said my line almost unconsciously. You know, I might spend 10 minutes on this essay, uh, in this video, but like, start with you. You know, in the play, there was a thunder crackle effect. And so you don't know that it's just an effect until you read the second sentence. Um, and then you realize, oh, it's a play. You know, that was, that was my, my own choice, you know, make a hook, but start how you want. Get, get your creativity across, right? Get your personality across. Um, well, I thought talking about insight between mind and body conflict was my personality. That's just what I constantly thought about. Again, this is what kind of clicked with me as I was writing this was, as a computer science major, I want to show that I'm more than just, you know, good at math or think a lot. So I'm not going to read this entire essay. You have 650 word limit, so you really have to, you know, get yourself across in this. And, you know, again, I made myself a character in a narrative. I talked about my audition and where I was before, and then I spoke of... Through the two and a half month period of rehearsals combined with working hard in one of my most important years of high school, I learned a lot of challenges I encountered. Before auditioning, if someone had told me that one decision can be a pivotal moment in your life, I would have disagreed because I thought multiple decisions would add up to a life-changing moment. The play resulted in me feeling more adept in social situations and more comfortable speaking in front of a large audience. That has kind of gone downhill, but anyway. <laughs> I started off where I was and just, you know, spent just a few sentences, one paragraph, talking about what grew over the time. What I'm saying is how I do things, and I really don't want to come across as giving you guys a formula for success. I love making lists for things, but not when it's, you know, listing facts or something. Um, you know, if I have to make a to-do list, great. But for this, as opposed to listing my achievements, was in a fall play, was class present, was in this class, in this class, in this class, you know, whatever. Instead, I said, Running for class president, I felt confident the speech I'd written. However, as soon as I walked to the podium, my legs did their signature. Let's turn into jelly. Again, another challenge, but it's not just, I was this, 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 and this, this happened, this happened, I did well on this and this. It's got, there's a point to it, right? It, it adds to the overall idea. And then at the end, I ended with, next up on the bucket list, 18, get a college degree. So <laughs> that's actually, that was like number two on the list, but my sister was like, you should make it sequential. I just wanted to share a little bit 
um, because it's important to get you out. Not to get you out as in to get you across. It's important to get you across. It's important to get you as a person, not as a bunch of achievements that make you up uh, or a bunch of, you know, facts, but how you view the world, I guess. And I'm going to end that there because, again, I don't want to give you a formula that you think is going to work. You, if you don't, if you aren't good at telling stories and you're great at, you know, research papers, talk about um, a research process you did. I just think that, you know, going, st really answering the question of where you were to where you are now and what happened in between, even if you have to cover it so briefly, is super important. Along with college um, applications, a lot of schools ask you for supplementals, and these are actually critical. I think these were super important. So really do spend time on these. And, there, and then lastly, on the writing part, I'm gonna end off with don't hold anything back. Don't, don't try to hide anything, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. For these supplementals, this is where you can do that list I mentioned. This is where you can um, show them the other achievements that didn't fit in the context of your personal essay. I think both NYU and Madison asked this, maybe it was a common app thing, um, but it said like, use these 500 words to tell us about anything else you would like to talk, talk about. And one thing that over the years I became very secretive of, you know, social pressures, and now I'm starting to, um, well, my hair looks really crazy right now. I'm starting to, you know, become more public again about it. And I've mentioned these videos before. So I, I started off this year, I've decided to pursue many interests alongside my core academics. Using the space, I'd like to elaborate upon those. So this is where I really took advantage to show everything that my grades don't show. My main reasoning for this was because my application, looking at it by the numbers, you see a kid who wants to enter as a computer science uh, major, but his most advanced classes were in the humanities and his math and sciences started kind of at a base level. In freshman, I was in all what we call CP classes, so like at a base level, and by my senior year, I was in all AP and honors. You know, I think that chain of progress is what, what really made me, because over high school I did, and that's another topic in itself, but you know, if, if you are applying to a school and you don't want to apply because at the beginning you had a D in math, but then by senior year you got a B plus, like, Send it. That improvement is great to see. I can't say that. I don't work in an admissions office. Again, I do think that improvement is huge. So I use this space to go into um, animation and my Minecraft server. I said, as a med mediocre 2D artist, I discovered great joy in 3D modeling animation. I taught myself several things, freedom in art, um, and side projects that I'm continuing working on. So again, this space is important to just list the things that you do that, that don't show up on your academic record. You know, you make it through the filter of numbers and this is what they're gonna read. Give them something to keep reading. Make them keep reading. People are reading, you know, I've heard this in so many different contexts. People have heard music, people have seen it a bunch of katas, but the admissions office has read so many of these essays that they want, you know, they want something. And also, if you're writing the same essay for multiple schools, change the name of the school. I was at a Madison tour and the person um, was saying that they read a fantastic essay but it ended with the wrong mask. You know, okay, going back to the whole thing about don't hide anything, I felt like sharing the fact I owned a Minecraft server was really kiddish, I guess is what I want to say. Um, you know, it takes a lot more than just playing the game to run a server. Anyway, uh, I literally started off... <laughs> I literally started off with saying, writing an application for college, it feels a little strange to include this next part. However, it has become such a core part of me that failing to mention it is similar to not including a key link in the chain of events that have made me into who I am today. I said this before, show how important something is. I did say that this is a place to list things, but again, show how important they are. Wow, this video is gonna run long. Hopefully, you know, hopefully good advice comes across in this. During the start of middle school, I used to play a game called Minecraft with all my friends by hosting a small server on my home computer. This small server has evolved into one with nearly 300 players that communicate very well with each other. Discord numbers, by the way, for anybody who is on the server. Discord numbers. The server and its growth is the bridge that satiated my curiosity by introducing me to not only programming, but also to community management and leadership. Um, so three huge things, community management, leadership, and programming. Um, although I rarely find myself sitting down to play Minecraft, I still am involved with my server through various other means. Through the server, I've developed numerous plugins, including mini games that players are able to play on a constant basis, blah, 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 blah. So again, I share that because don't, don't hide anything, right? If you made small animated cartoons on YouTube and you're applying to art school, even if you're not applying to art school, you know, share that. I would say if you have a bunch of things like that, list them out, explain each sufficiently, and then shorten it. Um, and then see if you have space for more. Don't try to get everything in. Get the things that are most important to you. And so I think I tried to mention this earlier, but I didn't get to my whole point. Um, I'm entering as a computer science major, 
but you won't see a single computer science course on my high school transcript. I felt like I needed space to explain this. As aforementioned, I've taken up a great interest in programming results. No computer science classes will show up in my transcript, and that is not because I want to wait until college, but because I did not want to wait until I had to have the proper math requirement. I jumped into learning Java as my first programming language at the beginning of high school with the internet as my teacher. So this video in its entirety, I guess up until now at least, has been the points of my application that I almost didn't include that I think I would have regretted not including had someone not told it to me. My dad, it took a little convincing for my dad to just tell me like, say it's Minecraft. Like originally when I wrote it, I just wrote game server and he was like, say it's Minecraft. There's nothing wrong with that. I just, you know, I was so afraid of, oh Minecraft, this kid's still a kid and he's not, you know, whatever. But again, don't try to hide anything. If it's something that has improved you as a person, add it in there. So yeah, that's all the writing bits. Um, and I guess that's kind of the most important thing I can say is once your numbers get by, you know, if you if you crunch at your senior year or, you know, your junior year, wherever you're at, either way, it'll come across good. If you get better numbers, it'll come across great. You can't change the past, so don't try to get caught up in it, but um, it's good to have a reach. Uh, always have a reach school and always have a zone school. By the numbers, um, NYU and Madison were my zone schools, but with how many how many people applied like i think nyu has a 9.9 acceptance rate in 2019 um with how many people apply and how how it's known that you know people get into those schools it was a reach so even if i get in by the numbers it's so important to really elaborate on every single part of yourself throughout the entire essay uh, i want to touch upon standardized tests and ap's real quick so in the US, um, APs are advanced placement. They're essentially college level courses that you take in high school and you take a national exam at the end uh, sometime in May. Internationally, there are also IB exams. Um, so if you've heard of those, kind of the same thing. You know, for APs, take what you're interested in. I self-studied for the AP computer science exam and the biology exam. My junior year, I did AP US history and I took the CS exam. At the time I got four on the CS exam, I didn't realize NYU took that. So I retook it my senior year, and by that point I had improved uh, quite a lot. You know, a the AP was a formula. If you didn't do something outside of the curriculum, you pretty much got no points. So studying for an AP exam is also another video I can make if people are interested because I feel like I now have a lot of knowledge on that. Uh, and then I self studied for bio as well. Now this was kind of a kind of a leap. I really biology is my favorite science, but I wanted to take anatomy and physiology because that's I was super fascinated in that. I just decided to take biology as well. I'm still not quite sure why I actually ended up doing it, but I was able to get like a textbook, um, those AP study books and those SAT, ACT study books, they're so helpful. You know, if if you know the material, they're good for practicing, getting used to the, the material, the, the formula of the test. Same thing for ACT, SAT. The ACT is made of various different components. You know, your best one goes. Fun fact, on my second ACT, which is what I use to get into schools and stuff, on my English portion, I got a 35. On my math portion, I got a 28. To put that into perspective, I just took Calculus 2 for the first semester, and a 28 would have placed me into Algebra 1, or Algebra 2 and Trigonometry, which I did not want to do again. So the AP, AB exam tested me out of Calc 1, thankfully. But um, those prep books, they're crucial. For the four days before the ACT, that was most of my day. I could have spent more time doing it, but again, don't kill yourself. My motto for that, and if you, like, I recommend you use this, but it's gonna suck for four days. It, it did suck for four days, but it paid off for four years. That's the point. You, you spend four days for this exam that might get you into school, and it pays off for four years. But I chose to use the ACT because I found the distribution of science, you know, math, English reading was much more representative of me. And, you know, again, as a computer science person, seeing how well I done the English and not the math, <laughs> pretty funny to me at least. Um, anyway, this uh, recording is coming up on 32 minutes, so I'll be lucky if I can get this up to 20 minutes. Thank you for watching, I do appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any questions about college and stuff, I'll answer those in the comments down below. I tried to put a section before this video on answering things about credits and cross school classes, but A, it's not gonna fit in this video, and B, it would just add more time, and you know, I can answer those in the comments. So. I got a bunch of comments on my last video, so thank you for that. It's really cool seeing comments after having, like, making YouTube videos for so long and not getting any response. Just getting 30 views and, you know, 5 subscribers that I totally know are means a lot right now. So yeah, that's, you know, those are the important parts of the college application process to me. If you, um, you know, if you're like a sophomore and you're going to be applying, just look at the prompts over the summer. Don't wait. 
that'll be really bad, along with school and on the importance of the end of junior year. Doing that will be pretty bad. And again, don't kill yourself. Focus on where you want to be. But just know that if you want to get somewhere high, you can't do a little work. Okay, I'm gonna end it off for real now. Um, thank you again for watching. Have a good one, and as always, don't forget to stay awesome.